Went to Asia, conquered that. Sons of Yafet been taken over this earth by the point of their sword. Bringing their lies and false doctrines and untruths. And dominating the earth and taking all of its resources. They've been doing it for two, more than 2,000 years. When you've been living like that. when you And see, and, and brothers and sisters, the warning is already being given. It's already started. It's not going forth in its full power yet. But it's already being given. Right? I mean, right here in these last 15 years. Right? Y'all, wait. Let me make sure you can hear this. Testing one, two, three. Can you hear me? I want to make sure. Okay, wait. In this last 15 years. You've been hearing more and more about white privilege. We didn't, when I was a little kid, right, back in the 60s and 70s, we didn't hear nothing about white privilege. We knew it existed, but it wasn't a thing. It wasn't a term. Now you're hearing more and more people complaining about white privilege. Why is that? You know why that is? Let me tell you why. It's a warning to the Caucasians. It's a warning. It's a warning to them. It's trying to tell y'all, wake up before it's too late now. Wake up. You're not going to maintain this power. You're about to lose it. It's coming to an end. Your white privilege is coming to an end. You're about to lose it. Wake up now. Now, the, most of them, the majority of them, are denying that it even exists. The majority of them, especially in the United States of America, they're trying to deny that there's even such a thing. You know what that is, right? A lie. A lie. That's what that is. A lie. That's the one. You're overweight and somebody trying to tell you you're overweight and you convince yourself you're not overweight. Can't fit into your clothes anymore. You done convince yourself you're not that fat and somebody telling you you fat. No, no, you're too big. And you saying, why are you telling me that and you getting mad? But they trying to tell you the truth. That's what the people that are denying white privilege are like. It's been established for 2,000 years. And now they're trying to deny it exists. It's, a, it's the beginning of the final warning. Things are turning around already. They tried to destroy the Hebrew people in the United States. Trying to destroy us. You know they tried to destroy us? Malcolm X in 1963 said we 22 million. That's what he said, 1963. We 22 million in this country, he said. And after that, they destroyed two generations of men, of Hebrew men were destroyed. Two generations. You say, how did they do it? First, they created public housing. Then they flooded the public housing with drugs and alcohol. That was destroying us. Then they created the welfare system. And they created the welfare system to take the black man out of the home. That's what they did. They created the welfare system to take the black man out of the home. That was the purpose. And then they got the woman by herself and they supported her. The government became her husband. Then they went forth and went and put another level. They brought crack. They created that down in Central America. In CIA labs, they created it, brought it into the inner cities where they had already gathered us together, destroying a generation between, and then they flooded it with guns. Guns that people can't generally get. They flooded in the black neighborhoods to cause us to fight over the crack, to fight over the money and kill each other. Those of us that didn't die from it, they put you in jail, stacked you up in jail. Till they decide they want their cities back and they gentrify it. And you can't afford to live there anymore. You come out of jail back to your neighborhood. You can't live there no more. Then they created the three strikes law. You get caught in a third time. You're in for life. Don't care if it's nonviolent crime or not. Took away another generation of black males. They can't make babies if they're in jail. And yet, here we are. Even according to their own census, 46 million. Wait. We were 63 million before they killed off two generations. And now, where we at? We doubled in size. And it's just like what happened to Pharaoh in Egypt. It's the same game. Satan don't change what he does. He, he tries to, he, he, you know, he reprograms, he tries to repackage it. But it's the same game. He don't change what he does. Why? Why should he? He's been working a long time. But you see what happened now in, in, in Exodus chapter 1. It's the same thing that happened, that's happening now. What happened now? And he said, when ye do the office of the midwife, 
up to the Hebrew women, see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. If it be a daughter, save it alive. But the midwives feared Yahweh and did not as the king of Egypt commanded, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and saved the men alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere their midwives come in unto them. Therefore Yahweh dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared Yahweh, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, every daughter you shall save alive. Hmm? Yeah. They 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 trying to kill the males. Trying to kill all the men off. Okay? Trying to kill the males. Notice verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. <laughs> See, that's what's going on now. They done afflicted us. They know they tried to kill us. And the more they afflicted us, the more we grew. And they are greed because of the children of Israel. Trying to destroy us. They try, and, and in their own greed, trying to exploit us for money before they kill us. Trying their best to do it. Privatize prisons. Right? Planned parenthood. Trying their best to exploit us and kill us. Causing stuff to be put in, in, in injections and in needles in the, uh, in the vaccines and things. Causing males to think they girls and girls to think they men. Huh? That's what they doing. Because you can't make babies. A woman that don't want nothing but another woman can't, don't want a baby. And a man that wants to have sex and sodomize with another man can't make a baby. But here we are. 46 million. And that's according to their numbers. 46 million. And they're trying to change the census so the Hebrews among the Hispanics, they can't be counted. That's what they're trying to do. Because they don't want us to know that we're about to outnumber them. They're scared of it. That's why they're trying to kill us with all desperation. But they're too greedy. Too greedy. Their greed and their lies catch up with them. Very sick it is. So now in the second resurrection... You got a group of people that have been living lies, that have been used to dominating and taking over for more than two millennia. And now they're, 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 they're faced with a situation. They rise up out the grave and Asatan is telling them, these people stole our city. We need to go take that city. Now, of course, that's a lie. But because they're all born and shaping in lies and, and die in lies, they believe it. And they say, yeah, they took our city. And Asatan says, see that tree in the middle of the city? If one of us can eat, if one of us can get there and eat a fruit of that tree, all of us will live forever. And we'll dominate this earth as we're supposed to. And that's when we go. Let's continue. Revelation chapter 38. Revelation chapter 38 from verse 9. Revelation chapter 38 from verse 9. Let's continue from verse 9 down to verse 14. Revelation 38, 9 to 14. Notice what it says. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land. Thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Most High Yahweh. It shall come to pass that at, that at the same time shall things come into thy mind. And thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited, and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land, Sheba and Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spark? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey? To carry away silver and gold? To take away cattle and goods? To take a great spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophecy and say unto God, Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it? Uh -huh. See, they're going to come up out their grave. They're going to see. We ain't going to have walls around our cities. Walls for what? We're not worried about nobody. They're going to see we prospering. They're going to see we have grown. We have developed. 
They're going to see it. And they're going to see the earth without them has been blessed. And they used to taking over. They used to discovering everything. So they're going to say, hey, it's time for us to discover that land. Time for us to discover that city. Time for us to discover that tree. Let's take it. They don't have no wall. They have no protection. We're going to take it. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 38. We in verse 14. Ezekiel 38. We in verse 14. Therefore, son of man, prophecy and say unto God, thus saith the most high Yahweh, in that day when my people Israel dwell in safety, shalt thou not know it? Uh-huh. They're going to see it. And they're coming. As we just read in Revelation chapter 20, we just read it. They're going to cover the earth. That's what the Bible showed us. It's the same thing. They're going to cover the earth and try to take the city. They're coming like a cloud over the whole earth. Because there's many more liars that are lost than righteous that are saved. They outnumber the righteous many times over. That's why you don't worry about numbers of people, brothers and sisters. All we're concerned with is the glory of the Father in the truth. That's it. Numbers are always going to be on the side of the liars on this earth. Okay? On this earth. He's saving a remnant. That's what he's doing. He's saving a remnant. The majority is going to be with the liars. The majority is going to be with Asatan. He's saving a remnant. We always going to be outnumbered. That's why when he calls us, he calls us alone. You ever notice that? When you have to stand for truth, you feel like you all by yourself. That's not accidental. He wants you to understand that feeling because you have to be able to stand for the truth because it's the truth. Not because anybody else is with you. Not because anybody else you can shuck and jive with. You got to stand for truth because it's truth and it glorifies the Father. But the majority, want to, they want to be with a whole bunch of other people. They want to rub shoulders together and they think by their numbers they have safety. Mm -mm. It's not going to help them. Remember, uh, Ezekiel chapter 38. Ezekiel 38 from verse 15. From verse 15 down to verse 18. Watch this. Ezekiel 38, 15 to 18. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts and many people with thee. All of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. I will bring thee against my land that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus said the Most High Yahweh, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which have which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when God shall come against the land of Israel, that the Most High Yahweh, said the Most High Yahweh, that my fury shall come up in my face. See, he's going to let them think they can plan, take the city, going to look like easy pickings for them. They're going to outnumber us. Till, the, till then they start marching upon it. Then this fury going to come up in his face. That's when they're going to have a serious problem. The heathen going to be. He's going to be sanctified in the heathen. You know what he means by that. Remember what he said to Pharaoh. He said for this cause I raised thee up. That I might show forth my glory in you. Pharaoh was stubborn. Wouldn't let the children of Israel go. And by the time it was done. His, his nation was destroyed. Same thing with God. They, they liars, they stubborn, they proud. they led by Asatan. They're going to try in all desperation to take the city, to take the land in which we dwell. But they're going to have a problem when the Bible says right here, he says, my fury shall come up in my face. Ooh, you don't, you don't want me messing with the father when he's feeling like that, man. Mm -mm, you don't want to mess with him when he's feeling like that. When my fury come up in my face. There's going to be a problem. See, Moses and the nation, our fathers, we caught a little bit, a little glimpse on Mount Sinai. When he brought forth his power and glory, and we read there in, these, in, in Hebrews, the earth was shaken because he came and settled on Mount Sinai to give, to give the covenant to the children of Israel through Moses. But this time, it's going to be a worldwide situation. This one here is, is whew, this is going to be like unlike anything the earth has ever experienced. Ezekiel chapter 38. Let's read from verse 
19, from verse 19 to verse 23. We're going to finish the chapter. Ezekiel 38, from verse 19 to verse 23. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men upon the, uh, uh, upon, that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground and I will call for a sword against him that is God throughout all my mountains said the most high Yahweh. Every man's sword shall be against his brother and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood and with rain upon him and upon his band and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am Yahweh. I want you to notice what it's saying here. The heathen that come against the, the nation, none of them are going to survive. None of them are going to survive. The heathen that come. See, whereas in chapter 39, you saw six of them that are going to be able to survive. They're going to serve the Israelites in the, in the kingdom. They're going to be able to live forever. They're going to also have the joy of righteousness upon them in the kingdom. But in chapter 38, none of them survived. That's the second resurrection. No survivors. The only ones left are the righteous ones that are taking place in the first resurrection. The righteous ones whose name are written in the book of life. They're going to be around forever. Praise the Most High. He's going to bless us. He's going to bless our children, our children's 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 children. He's going to bless us forever. That's the promise. No more death. No more sorrow. No more crying. Former things passed away. All things made new. He going to dwell with us and be our God. And we're going to be his children. And we'll never go back into sin or slavery or oppression ever again. We will never disobey his covenant ever again. Praise to the Most High Yahweh. Let's have a word of prayer.